So uh, please tell us your name and your roll number for this exam. Dr. Payal Gupta. 402-140. Okay. And without uh, uh, telling your name, uh, please give us a brief introduction. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for giving me an opportunity to introduce myself. I was born in Ghaziabad, Uttar Pradesh and brought up in the silver city of India, that is Qatar. I did my 10th, that is CBSC, from DAV Public School in 2001 and 12th from Ravinsha Junior College in 2003. I did my graduation and my post-graduation in 2009 and 2014 respectively from the pioneer and the best institute of dentistry in India, that is Dr. R. Hemmer Dental College and Hospital. Currently, I am posted as a government dental surgeon in district headquarters, Nayagar. So my achievements may include, I scored highest marks in Qatar in 10th class. I was awarded for maths and science uh, marks in class 10. Besides that, I'm a gold medalist in both graduation as well as post-graduation. In graduation, I got an international award for scoring highest marks in prosthodontic subject in Sri Lanka, Nepal, and India. Besides that, I have also been a topper of so many paper presentations we did during our post-graduation time. Thank you, sir. Okay, fine. So uh, basically, you have uh, um, you are a qualified doctor, and you yes. have been uh, uh, you are already in government service. So you give some good reasons why you want to shift to civil services. So this was actually a very challenging and a difficult decision on my part. But the thing is, I am actually a government doctor, and that is why I have so many eye-opening experiences while I worked in the government sector. There are so many loopholes, shortcomings, adversities, implementation and execution of the different schemes goes wrong. So I'm well aware of what the problems government sector faces. It, there's a famous saying in my profession, diagnosis is as important as the treatment. So same goes with the health sector. The health sector is full of so many problems like manpower reduction or instrumentation problem, equipments problem, so many things. But the thing is, the problem is not getting diagnosed at the very grassroots level. It's not being able to communicate it to the higher authorities and hence the proper steps could not be taken. So I feel if I become a part of administration, I can bridge the gap between government and the health sector. And for surely, I'll be having a sensitive part corner towards health section. So secondly, I also thought of this thing that actually the Odisha government in budget 2022 have allocated around 6.8% for health. This is a very nice ratio, but all the schemes will go in vain if they are not properly executed. And for proper execution, I feel one of us should be a part of that thing. Again. Uh, so there is scarcity of staff. That is, uh, I'm from dental um, dentistry. According to WHO, there should be around one dentist for around 7,500 people. But in Odisha, it's about one dentist per lakh people. But the problem is every year, 3,000 or 4,000 dental students graduate. So we have a population. We have, we need it. That is, we have a demand. We can also supply. But the thing is not done because maybe the recruitment is not done in a better way and this is not getting communicated to them. So I feel I can do it if I get a chance to come into administration. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, See, so another thing is like once you finish, okay, uh, you uh, did not say thank you all the time. So just after Sorry. your uh, uh, introduction, okay, I think once is fine. Even that also is optional. If you uh, want to skip it also, it is fine. Okay. okay right. So what were your optionals for this exam? So history and home science. History and home science. Okay. Yes. So you, have not, you have not taken medical science? 
No, sir. Medical science. Actually, I have read medical science. Medical science is a very vast word. It actually constitutes around twenty subjects. So, reading that in such small period of time with such, so uh, it it is difficult. Although I am very much aware of those things, but uh, when we are going supposed to write sixty marks answers, you need to know each and every detail. And medicine consists of around twenty different subjects. What we read in our four years. so it would have been very tedious a job to finish that that is why i didn't opt for medicine okay so uh, just uh, before this you are talking about uh, that uh, <coughs> you are a mother of two children right yes sir yes sir so uh, for how long you have been in service with government of odisha so around 7 years i'll complete 7 years this time so how do you manage uh, both i mean work life balance because doctor as a doctor it's a obviously a very hectic job and um, along with that uh, taking care of uh, two uh, small children so now suppose you are selected here <laughs> yes sir um how do you plan to go about it i mean will you be able to maintain the work life balance sure sir so actually this is very difficult on every woman's part whenever she is working to maintain a work life balance but i can say in my case i am very fortunate because i have got a very caring and an understanding husband who is available for me and a family who cares about my dreams and my aspirations too uh and as such i have good management skills as i said so i actually do a lot my time of 24 hours i divide it every day in the morning this is my to do list i have to spend this much of time and rest i get time for my family and my friends and for myself also besides this sir i will least uh, last not but not the least the mention of my domestic help and caretakers of my children they are present with me whenever i am not present at home or i am busy with duty they take care of my home and my children this gives me strength and confidence i have been doing this since past so many years and i feel if my timetable my routine gets even more uh, busier or complicated i'll be able to manage with all these scenario uh, things in my hand okay that's fine so uh, this is your first attempt in civil service odisha civil services yes sir first and maybe the last also because i'll be like the age limit i'll cross the age limit this time so okay so don't you think that you are with your expertise in medical science suppose you are selected and you join um, as a bd or tahsildar your medical expertise the public money which has been uh, spent uh, on the subsidized education which the government has given you uh, don't you think that uh, it will all be a waste sir uh, it's very famous in history when you want to do something big some things have to be sacrificed and i feel if i get into administration i can get better some things to my field that is dentistry and health sector both so i think it will be okay if i am going and i am getting something for them i let us try for that thing so it won't be a waste if i achieve something there mm -hmm. okay but as a doctor you can directly serve the people so like if i compare your current role and the role which you are aspiring for uh what is the difference that uh, you know you are perceiving that by coming into civil service what extra will you be able to do for the society um, in general and odisha in particular uh, which you are unable to do as a doctor sir it is true as a doctor i get to serve people directly from the grassroots level but uh, medical science has different parts with different subjects it has different this in government sector we are supposed to do a particular type of a work especially if i talk about dentistry that is my field you get a particular amount of instruments a particular amount of materials i know the treatment but i am not able to give it to the patients because there are no facilities available so i think that is that way the potential of doctors is getting wasted a very small example of uh, the materials which were delivered to us two years back 3 lakh rupees was spent on each and every dentist and the materials and equipment came but when the list came and the materials came out of half of those materials were waste that is they are obsolete not used now we are just wondering who made the list and who allotted money and who passed all these maybe they don't know what is required 
so if someone experienced in this thing comes to their help the better execution of the uh, different projects and different uh, schemes would take place that is what i feel so i was serving i am serving i'll be serving people in future but in a different slight different way maybe i'm not able to help in that way which i can do through administration as i said i'll try to increase the recruitment i'll bring this topic in front of if i am not in that post i'll be close to the people who are able to do this so i can bring that topic in front of those people regarding recruitment regarding this the investment of the materials and the equipments that things okay <coughs> fine so um, uh, you have uh, uh, history and home science as your optional so Yes. Some quick questions from that. So, uh, in history, which is your uh, most comfortable or your favorite part? The ancient, modern, medieval, world, Odisha. Sir, so I like world history a lot. Okay, fine. So, uh, can you tell me uh, the major difference between the Enlightenment, okay, and the period of Reformation in France? Okay, and in UK, what's the major difference between them in France and UK? In France and UK, England, France and England. England yes, sir. Enlightenment and uh, sorry, sir, uh, enlightenment and uh, reformation. Reformation. Okay, generally speaking, what were the major ingredients or you know you can say that the major features of enlightenment across europe so as the uh, intellectual people started increasing matlab i mean to say the knowledge increased people came to know about different ideas like freedom democracy and uh, having their own government their own rights so that was the main idea i think was behind uh, enlightenment and that caused that brought reformation in the other way in france and uk france uh, was up to around 1780 uh, it was under the uh, monarchy uh, monarchy and then again it came under napoleon so i think reformation and enlightenment in uk was much more radical as compared to france okay so uh, what do you think about the spread of uh, enlightenment and the other ideas into the colonies how how these ideas spread in short briefly can you give me an outline yes sir uh, sir the colonies uh, in colonies also people from these places like suppose uh, france colonies or uk colonies people came even the scholars came when press and literature increased its influence in the colonies these ideas spread like fire everywhere as a result of which people started coming to know about these things like even a small examples like uh, when japan was able to fight against the great big powers people came to know yes yes the asian countries can also fight against these big powers and hence we should also rise then when the stories of american revolution french revolution reached the colonies like india and africa the wave of democratization was very uh, bright i can say that was the reason the, in this way enlightenment came to the colonies okay um so uh, can you tell me uh, what were the uh, major reasons for the disintegration of ussr so starting with the arms race and the space race there was a lot of fight in between ussr and in uk for hegemony as a result of which a lot of money was unnecessarily wasted on arms and space which completely crippled the economy of ussr it used to be a great nation then 10 years afghan war ussr is such a big nation and if it is not able to tackle a small country like afghanistan this will actually break the morale and also uh, invite enemies from all side cold war was one of the also another important reason so last but not the least some of the leaders of ussr like stalin and his radical thinking and gorbachev and his uh, wrong policies like glasnost and perestroika were responsible for disintegration of ussr in 1991 mm -hmm. gorbachev was in news recently gorbachev sorry sir i don't he passed away okay sir sorry. recently okay. okay um 
fine. Other optional, you have taken home science. So yes, uh, why the choice of optionals? Like you said that you didn't take medical science because it is a very long, you know, yes, uh, huge syllabus. Same thing with uh, history also. History is having 48 sub modules around. So, you know, again. So, hmm. so people say history is a very, uh, uh, people say it's very complicated. You need to mug up things. But I personally believe history is like story. You remember stories. You don't need to practice mug up so many times. Like suppose I read a topic. There are some basic idea I can develop in my mind. I don't have to mug up and remember again and again. But in medical science, the words have to be practiced, written. The cycles have to be repeated again and again and again. So I feel history is more comfortable and a better subject when we compare it to medical science, at least. OK. What about um, home science? Why you have chosen home science? So two things forced me towards the home science. One is that I have a great interest in all these things like nutrition, cooking, home, then uh, like home decor and all these. And secondly, I wanted a little smaller subject as a second optional so that I have to read little bit less as I don't have so much of time because I manage home, work, kids and all. So I was thinking of a subject which will at least be a bit easy for me because I have idea about nutrition and all from medical background. So half of home science, like home science one was much easier and home science two only had to pick prepare. So it was easier. And that is why I chose home science. OK, so you travel daily to your workplace or you uh, stay there? So I'm Niagara. staying this. I stay in Niagara and I'm staying just beside my hospital. I don't have the quarters, but I've taken a house just beside my hospital because my daughter is like really very small. She's just one year old. OK, so <laughs> a few questions from home science. So suppose you are selected in this exam and uh, you are uh, posted as Tahsildar of a particular Tahsil. And uh, um, there is some kind of survey, manual survey to be done in agricultural fields. So your uh, subordinate staff, OK, and this is peak summer, let's say May. So you, you are to advise okay, a dress, a uniform for your subordinate staff, keeping in mind that yes, it is peak summer, the work they will yes, do uh, from 10 a.m. to let's say 4 p.m. will be basically manual surveying of agricultural fields. OK, so what kind of uh, uh, clothes would you suggest or recommend? So first of all, when we are selecting clothes, first thing what I feel is a person should be comfortable in them. And for summers, the best fabric is uh, cotton. And when we go for colors, lighter colors, so that will reflect all the light, whatever falls on it. And it is also absorbent. So when you are sweating or something, it will also be comfortable when air passes through that because it's a kind of a meshwork. In cotton, we have a meshwork so that it's airy also. So I'll always advise uh, cotton light colored clothes in summer to my staff. OK, fine. So now coming to some current affairs. Uh, Recently, there was uh, some air show in Odisha in two cities uh, by the Indian Air Force. Are you aware of that? No, no sir. Sorry, sir. I don't know about it. Bhubneshwar and Puri by the Surya Kiran uh, Air Acrobatics Team. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, when you're saying, I can remember, but I don't exactly remember that news. I think okay. I've seen it. Uh, but, uh... Recently, there has been a change in the flag of the Indian Navy. Do you have any idea? No, sir, sorry, sir, I don't. Okay. Acha, tell me, uh, give me some good examples of doctors, okay, yes, who have become uh, politicians or very, uh, very proficient or high level or administrators, according to your knowledge. So, doctors of different fields that like they can be even veterinary or anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have a health minister of India, Dr. Mansuk Mandavili. And okay. then we have, uh, sir, in my Niagara only, I have a doctor collector, Dr. Koma Todi, to do. Then uh, Dr. Rajendra Prasad was also there. Then uh, Dr. Rajendra Prasad? I think he was doctorate, sorry, sir. He was not an MBBS doctor. But he was a doctorate. Yeah, yeah he was a doctor. Sir, and uh, 
So this much comes to me now. Okay. Um, fine. So oh, your home district is uh, Katak. Yes, sir. I have been staying in Katak. Actually, I have been brought up in Katak. I have been staying there since 1989. When I was two or three years old, I became that in Katak. Okay. So can you tell me, and since also you have taken history as your optional, uh, can you tell me the from where this Katak term has been derived and what is the meaning of Katak? That is first. Katak is also called Avinav Varanasi. Can you tell me why it is called Abhinav Varanasi? So it is the old name of Katak. It was given by uh, Eastern Ganga ruler. It is called Abhinav Varanasi. So why? So I don't know. But uh, Aninga Bhima okay, gave from, this name this much I know. Uh, from where uh, this, what is the meaning of this term Katak? So it comes from a word Katak, C-N-A-K-A-T-A-K. -A -A and uh, this Katak means uh, Military establishment or a capital or a fort, as we have a Barabati fort in this, on the basis of this, it is Katak. Okay. So it is called Abhinav Varanasi because just like uh, Banaras, like Varanasi, which is, yes, uh, you know, uh, flanked by two rivers, rivers Katak is also yes, flanked by two rivers. Okay. Two rivers. That is the, yes, the reason it is called Abhinav Varanasi. Okay. <laughs> so uh, suppose. You know, I I am coming from outside, like outside Odisha, and yes, uh, I ask I ask your recommendation. Uh, I ask you to recommend me at least three places, three good places, which I should visit in your district in Katak. So, uh, which would be those three places that you would recommend to me, and why? Sir, in Katak, uh, Baravati Fort. I'll first recommend you Baravati Fort because that. Uh, that was a fort that was utilized by the kings. So it is, although it is in remains form, but still we get idea of some architecture out there. And then I'll ask uh, for the museum. We have two museums, good museums. A maritime museum is present and a general museum. So we can go to that museum in Katak. And uh, I'll uh, also suggest Naraz, which is a kind of an embankment. It is very uh, nice in the evening and during sunset and uh, sunrise. I'll advise these three places. Oh, you won't tell me about uh, Netaji's birthplace? Netaji's birthplace. Netaji's sure. so, so, birthplace. Uh, yes, sir. So, so sure. This should be good. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm. What are the major issues that your district faces? problems faced uh, by Qatar and suppose you are given the power and the resources to yes, uh, solve these problems and what steps uh, will you take to solve these problems top three problems you can tell me so uh, water logging during the monsoons this is a very big problem in Qatar because Qatar is very crowded it has small lanes planning is required which is not possible now but Still water logging, then uh, follow uh, so traffic rules, uh, following of traffic rules. I'll say some third ones that I don't use. Yeah, uh, many uh, you can uh, think of uh, many other issues. Okay, the two you have said, okay, related to planning, related to water logging. Okay, so yes. right. Any three great personalities from your district and what has been their contribution uh, to Odisha? So, born in Katak, from Katak. Yeah, from Katak, yes. From Katak district. Current so Katak is, district. Current Katak district. So, one is Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, who was born in uh, Katak. Mm -hmm. so, I know other alumni of Revensha who are very famous, like Haragusham Hatav and others. Who are born, I don't know, sir. Okay, fine. A lot of people you'll get in all domains. Okay. So, uh, that yes, is. Sir. Okay. Recently, since you're from the medical field, uh, yes, recently, sir. Government of India has asked suggestions from the states uh, regarding yes, naming of the aims in their own states. So, they have asked the state governments to give some uh, recommendations of local heroes or local uh, great uh, people uh, from that state. 
so suppose you are given that responsibility to recommend one name from odisha uh, you know to to rename this aims in bhubneshwar so whom would you choose and why so i choose uh, utkalmani gopabandhu das he was very significant during the freedom struggle and he is also credited uh, to the opening of the popularization of the satyabdhi school so i feel he had a very important part during the non cooperation movement bringing gandhi ji to odisha and then collecting money for swaraj and even gandhi ji said that if we have thousands of uh, gopabandhus with us we can get independence in just a year so he was very dedicated and he is actually a gem of odisha and i feel he if i am given this responsibility i'll surely give his name because as such his name is not flashed a lot that's why right, okay fine um now suppose you are uh, you are a tahsildar and uh, yes, you have gone to a place for a field report and suddenly old woman uh, comes out of nowhere and uh, slaps you okay well, how will you react in that situation Uh, you are with your I, you are with your security and you have the force with you also so i am in a government job since so many years and i have faced this type of situations many a times you need to be calm and quiet and patient and you have to listen to why did she, like we have to listen to why did she do that and what is her point of view in that instead of reacting in a very assert uh, Uh, instead of being angry or scolding her or asking the security for help i think i should talk to that lady this is what we also do in hospitals because patients of all types come to us they blame us they force us sometimes they beat us and throw things also but every time we have to keep our nerves so that is i'll behave in that way sir i have an experience of this thing Okay, that is fine. So, uh, my next question would be uh, related to uh, what, according to you, what are the three most important virtues or characteristics that um, a civil servant uh, should have? So, perseverance, honesty, management skills. These three. Mm -hmm. okay so uh, what is your opinion uh, regarding the recent uh, decision of delhi government to ban firecrackers for a prolonged period of time like uh, right from dashara up to uh, new year january 2 so it has met with criticism with some section of the people saying that it is uh, you know prohibiting them from uh, celebrating their festivals so uh what is your opinion uh, do you agree with the whatever the government the state government has done in delhi sir i personally agree to all these radical steps i am a follower of netaji and i feel sometimes you have to do this radical steps have to be taken so that you have to be harsh to the public because these types of warnings are repeatedly being given and they are not being followed it would make a difference this is just the third uh, just important for their own thinking that we need crackers to celebrate and we need uh, this uh, things to celebrate we celebrate festivals with love with our loved ones we don't need these things so those people who are against it they will have one point or the other always against you so it's not uh, always uh, it is not recommended to listen to these people uh, but i'll suggest ki the thing or the law which has been made or the step which has been taken must have been gradually taken not at a time suddenly that is what i think okay so since you are from the uh, medical field um what is your opinion regarding uh, do you know of the recent controversy related to abortion rights in united states of america abortion rights no sir i don't know sir earlier it was constitutionally protected uh, it was a constitutionally protected right but now the supreme court of usa has uh, taken that um uh, it is not constitutionally protected anymore and as a result some states they have enacted anti abortion laws so uh, the the women in those states now of the us do not have 
the right uh, you know uh, of uh, abortion so what is your uh, opinion regarding this sir i am a mother of two i am a lady i feel it should be left on the lady whether she want to have a baby or not these abortion rules shouldn't be implemented in such a manner because you cannot force a mother to love her child even if she is not allowed to kill that child by abortion or to get rid of it she will not have such a bond with that child even if he or she is born so abortion is such a delicate topic it should not be held, uh, handled in such a manner and ladies should be given their permission unless and until it is harmful to them that is naturally a medical practitioner should advise when this abortion is to be done and how is it to be done but uh, the decision should be finally of the mother unless and until it is harmful to her health that is what i feel sir. okay uh, can you tell me the situation in india the legal position in india uh, related to abortion sir abortion in india is allowed if it is allowed from uh, by a medical uh, practitioner and generally the abortion can be done till 18 weeks okay um do you have any idea on euthanasia yes sir that is uh, if a person wishes to die because he is not able to live the life as he wished or he is uh, in trouble with that life he can ask for death i think that is euthanasia okay fine so i think uh, that will be the end of the interview now the feedback so uh, your flow of speech and other things that is fine um, like, um, eye contact etc it will be difficult to judge from this uh, virtual yes. interview so that if you are practicing mirror interviews so ensure that your eye contact is 100% the person who asks yes. you the question you have to look in their eyes so line of sight during uh, any interview will only be the eyes of the interviewers okay yes. the person who is asking you the question 80% time you have to look at him and rest 20% are other people who are sitting okay maybe three or four uh, member board so accordingly you have to uh, take care okay so that okay. is the thing otherwise uh, your uh, answers are quite to the point uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, whatever explanation is required that is also included your thought is very clear so th that is a big positive and uh, your flow of speech your voice etc everything is fine okay so <laughs> uh, you should be ready to face a lot of questions on health sector and your uh, and your uh, you know work basically because uh, in the last two days including today most of the questions for those who were in uh, you know in 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 uh those who are in uh, any kind of uh, um, job those who are having some work experience most of the questions were based on that okay so you can just uh, accordingly brush up uh, those things related to your uh, job profile okay and uh, current affairs i mean including I yes and uh, that would be just recent things and most important things uh when is your uh, interview on which date so, so 28 so actually okay. i haven't seen this current affairs lately and home science both of the things i have kept for last two days we are just mug up and go but this uh, health related current affairs which you asked is very difficult to find in so this abortion and all i have read current affairs but i didn't see these things anywhere so like no, this is this, this was a big international news because us is considered mm -hmm. As the torch bearer of uh, you know this libertarian uh, rules and all, so in that yes, country sir. if this is happening, then in more conservative countries, let's say like yes, uh, in um, Africa and all, so things will be really bad. Yeah, yeah, so, yes. uh, so this is important. Actually, this is very important. Yes. So uh, okay, and another another thing is uh, uh, on on that particular day, twenty eighth uh, September, importance yes, of twenty eighth September. Like what is okay, celebrated sir. on that day? So international this day, that day, something will be celebrated. Just check that one. So national day, something will be celebrated. National tobacco yes. day, this day, or whatever. Just check that. Okay. Only and of that in, day, na, sir. Uh, only, only of that, of that yeah. day. Yes. Only on that yes. day, but they, they can ask you what was yesterday, 
called tourism day or something like so for two three days you can just uh, go through uh, you know in that, in that. and um, any important birthdays or death anniversaries on that day yeah. that also you can see related to india of course okay sir okay rest things are fine so depending on your main mark in interview you will get good marks like uh, you will you will get within the top 10 percentile okay top 10 percentile you will get easily okay so please uh, uh, you make some question sets of the most probable questions and your uh, answering style in opinion based question is also perfect you are enumerating and answering so this is my first reason this is my second reason that is exactly the way in which you have to answer <laughs> opinion based questions okay so that, that is uh, you, you you should continue with that so overall uh, if i mark you from 250 this interview would be in the range of 190 to 200 okay thank you sir uh, so uh, all the best for your uh, interview just keep these things in mind okay thank you sir thank you sir i will, can i get this recording matlab this recording I yes can of get course you can get it just uh, it will it'll take some time to upload okay so sir no problem just uh, you ping me tomorrow i'll give you the link yes sir Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night.